Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to review the 300 series of ships, so the 300i, the 315p, the 325a and the 350r. Um, it looks a little bit like I'm having a stroke with this character. One of my sides of my face is a bit numb. Um, don't worry, that is just because I haven't set up FOIP properly. I literally just turned it on and it seems to work reasonably well most of the time without having to tweak it now, which is good. Also, no tongue movement. Come on, toip. Tongue over IP, please. That would be good. An extra year in development. The 300 series are a low to mid tier set of small single seater ships focusing on quality, form and a surprising amount of facilities for their size. I also think they look amazing with the recent 3.5.1 alpha rework of the ships. All of the 300 series share a common exterior with all that really changes between them is loadouts and paint schemes and cargo size. The ship is very long but not very wide being 27 meters in length, 17 meters in beam, and 8 meters tall. They range in mass from 58.5k to 72.5k kilograms, and stock SCM speeds range from 204 to 258 meters per second. Each of the variants all have small components, so size 1 basically, with two fuel intakes, two tanks for fuel, two coolers, two shield generators, and a single slot for all other components, which is basically typical of a ship this size. However, a ship having two fuel tanks is actually a little rarer. They have 12 gimbaled maneuvering thrusters, which gives them a lot of agility and strafe acceleration for their size. They're certainly not going to be um, slow and they're going to be relatively uh, fast and maneuverable. And they are much bigger or at least longer than most light and medium fighters. In fact, the ship has stubby wings, which reduces its beam size compared to larger, more traditional wings of other ships. But its sort of central body is quite thick uh, and has quite a lot of interior going on there. The 300 is closer in length to a Cutlass now, which is 29 meters, uh, than it is to a Sabre, which is a medium fighter, which is 24 meters. What you get for this is facilities. They have a bed and a toilet, all of them. And other than the 350R, they all have a quite expansive living area with uh, more room, a sink, an area for food and drinks makers, and what other little gubbins you want to put in, other little flare items or functional items around. There's also a suit locker and weapons rack for two rifle-sized weapons and maybe some other items like grenades and pistols on top of that. Facilities like this are going to be very important in the future with the player status system, which tracks some light survival stats, and local inventories, which means you can't just carry all of your gear around in a magic bag of holding. You literally have to store it in places and grab it and then take it around with you when you want to move it around. Beds are going to allow you to log out more safely and easily, as well as rest. Toilets are going to be important for hygiene. Thirst and hunger will also be a thing, and space to put a drink or food maker might be very useful, as well as the space for FPS gear, allowing you more flexibility in what you're carrying on you. And there also might be some restrictions of literally um, if you can sit down in a seat of a... A ship wearing certain armor types, things like that as well, which you could then have stored in your ship and put it on when you need it. Most other single seat craft don't have any facilities, or at least uh, a lot of them don't. And the 300 has great ones for its size, even though it's been made, I suppose, larger for that purpose. This will give you a longer operating time and range, potentially. Combat-wise, all of the ships are able to run full fixed or gimbaled loadouts pretty effectively. We'll be able to test a fixed loadout much better once they're not broken. Uh, 3.5.1 is not great uh, for using fixed weapons, but gimbaled weapons and um, auto gimbaled, yeah, it's great for each of those 300 series coming with at least two size three weapon mounts, one on each wing, and a different nose mount, depending on which variant you go for. And they all have uh, at least two size two missile racks, other than the 325A, which has a much larger missile loadout. The 300i, if you're going to travel the stars, why not do it in style? The 300i is Origin Jump Works premier luxury spacecraft. It's a sleek silver killer that sends as much of a message with its silhouette as it does with its weaponry. Some have accused Origin of putting style over substance and inflating the sticker price to match. 
but at heart, the 300i is still an elegant dogfighter's tool. The 300i is basically the base model of the range. I see it as not having much of a focus as the other 300s do, but it is able to do a bit of everything, but not really great to any one role. After you've moved past like starter ships in the game, I see the 300i or the Avenger Titan being the natural progression for multi-role or budget pilots. Uh, it has a size 3 nose weapon mount, so you can run a solid monoboat loadout with three size uh, 2 weapons uh, or three size 3 fixed weapons, whatever you want to do, whether you want a gimbal or not. It's the second lightest of the 300 series, at stock anyway, at 66.3 thousand kilograms mass, but also has the slowest speed SEM wise of 204 meters per second and 1190 max cruise. The 315P is more focused on exploration and utility. Exploration is man's highest calling. Prepare to chart distant horizons with man's most sophisticated piece of technology, the Origin 315P, featuring a more robust power plant and custom scanner package exclusively designed by Chimera Communications. The 315P is listed and suggested to be an exploration ship, but I think it's only really slightly more focused towards that role. Uh, the ship is suggested to have long range engines uh, by some of its descriptions. Um, we're gonna be able to have the ability to buy and change different thrusters and engines and stuff in the future. So maybe this will have better stock ones, but at the moment we don't really, really know. Uh, it has a size three tractor beam as its nose mount and it's listed as a size three utility mount. So this might have other options for in the future. Having a tractor beam does make it really useful for helping with salvage, mining, grabbing loot and cargo, and even helping ships out of atmosphere. But at the moment, it can't change off that tractor beam mount. It can't change it for a weapon or anything. It does have additional cargo capacity compared to the other 300 series, 12 SCU, rather than the base 300's eight SCU and the 325 and 350R's four SCU. The enhanced scanning suite should allow for some more focused exploration and discovery gameplay, but to what extent we don't really know yet. Though it has some exploration advantages, unless that scanner is amazing, in my opinion it's not going to have a massive advantage over, or at least a massive range of sort of like operation over the rest of the 300 series. It doesn't have the fuel capacity, it's a small ship, uh, it may be more efficient I suppose though, but when it comes to exploration gameplay, this crosses over really with science, surveying, scanning, and it doesn't really identify which of those and exactly what it's going to be doing within an exploration role. So I would expect to see the ship useful for short to mid-range utility, surveying and discovering points of interest, it may well be players sort of like starting ship for exploration and those other mentioned roles. The ship is heavier than the 300i at 69.2 thousand kilometers, but also faster. Um, it has an SCM speed of 210 and a max cruise of 1225. The 325A is more focused towards combat and dogfighting. Just because it's a rough galaxy doesn't mean you need to sacrifice your comfort the 325A can come out on top in any dogfight. The 325A features an advanced weapon payload as well as a custom targeting system designed especially for the 325A by Wills Op. It has a S4, a size 4 nose mount for its weapon, which gives it quite a lot of punch. The ship has lots of missiles, um, so it has two size 3 missile hardpoints and a size 5 missile hardpoint. Uh, just a reminder of how missiles work in the game, you can typically fit a mount allowing you to have up to a single missile of the same size as the hardpoint or two of a smaller size and that's multiplicative. So a size 3 could have uh, one size 3 missile, two size 2 missiles or four size 1 missiles. The size 5 mount in this case appears to be specific for the ship though. It can't be changed and it allows for four size 3 missiles. The targeting system it has is supposed to be able to sort of like lock onto multiple targets and then fire at all of them with missiles at the same time. I actually don't think that's that useful anymore. It used to be really useful for me because it was the first ship I ever used um, in, in combat in Arena Commander. It's how I learned the game basically. Uh, you are able to lock onto multiple um, Vandal at the same time and fire all your missiles and kill them all pretty much. And when you're playing Arena Commander sort of like Vandal Swarm competitively or trying to get the best score, that is really useful because you go, ha, ah, I've killed all the ones that I wanted to kill uh, and now you can't sort of stuff. Now, 
I would actually now prefer that shit, that 325A, and I think it's much more sensible to have it just have quicker locking systems for its missiles. Something like that. I think that would make more sense, but that's just my opinion, and please share yours. It's the heaviest of the 300 series at 72.5 thousand kilograms, but also the second fastest uh, SCM at 225, and uh, it has a max cruise of 1315. The 350R is all about racing. Origin Jump Works 300 series is the ultimate fusion of elegance and power. Every component, every part is individually calibrated, so no matter which model and options you choose, your ship will stay in perfect harmony as the ultimate in astro engineering. By far the fastest member of the family, the 350R refocus all of the 300's power and translates it into pure speed. So the 350R has a lighter hull and is significantly lighter than the rest of the 300 series at 58.5 thousand kilograms. This affords it less effective health, but it is more agile, um, it has better acceleration, it's faster with an SCM speed of 258 meters per second and 1345 crews. In the future, there is going to be armor, a piercing system, physicalized components, rather than ship health pools, and it will be time to disable rather than always time to blow your ship up that we sort of like currently have. So it will be interesting to see how the ship does in combat and what the lighter hull and effectively lighter armor, I'm assuming, and will actually mean for the ship uh, once all those sort of like features are in. The ship only has the toilet and bed rather than all of the gubbins and facilities that the rest of the 300 series have. Admittedly, that's still a lot more than other small ships have, which sometimes have none of those things. Uh, it's likely to be one of the best racing ships in game, at least at certain courses in the future. That's what they're aiming balance towards, and it is pretty awesome uh, as a racer, at least the way it looks and the way it sort of like feels. Cargo space wise, the 300i has eight SCU of cargo space with a cargo bay and lift underneath the ship that can be opened from the exterior center port side of the ship. The 315p has that center bay for cargo with eight SCU, but also a rear bay, which is openable further um, and sort of like just adding to the amount of cargo it can have by another four. You can open that from the port um, side exterior on the same side but it's further down the ship, it's closer to the engines. So that's 12 SCU in total with that 315P. The 325A and the 350R have four SCU, just the rear bay is usable, not that central bay. The 325A has reduced cargo size because it has that missile system. However, I was expecting the 350R to have zero SCU with it being focused on racing and having a lighter hull, um, but four SCU is tons for all your needs, I suppose. Uh, ship costs, all of these ships will be available to buy in-game and rent at some point. Potentially, very soon actually, with rentable ships uh, coming in the Persistent Universe in 3.6 and a bit of a jostle around of what ships are going to be purchasable. But let's talk about how much these cost now with IRL monies, in real life monies. Uh, the 300i starts from $55, which is pretty reasonable. However, this puts it in direct competition with the Avenger Titan, in my opinion. The 315p starts from $65 if you're purchasing with real money. And it's sort of like nicely in its own place. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be excelling in exploration, but it at least does more exploration than any other single seater ship in its sort of like price range does. I mean, the, the next closest is probably the Terrapin, which is incredibly overpriced. The 325A starts from $70, though at this price it's competing with the Arrow Light Fighter and Avenger Titan as well, I suppose. Uh, the 350R starts at $125, and you're paying a lot for it being a racing ship there. I love the look of the 300 series, but the Avenger Titan on paper is just a better choice in my opinion than the 300i or the 325a. The Avenger Titan doesn't have a toilet or the sort of like range of facilities that the uh, 300 series have, but it does have a bed and some FPS gear storage. The fact that the Avenger is only $50, has eight SU of cargo, has two size three and one size four weapon mounts, uh, two size three missile mounts. I think that's just amazing. Also, its cargo hold is shaped in a slightly different way, which should allow for a Tumble Ranger bike to fit in there, and I believe it does allow for a Grey Cat to get in there snugly as well. Something that even the 315P, with both of its bays and 12SU, might not be able to fit in due to the way its cargo lift is done. We'll have to wait and see with the Tumble Ranger, admittedly, but it's it's almost certain with the, the Avenger Titan that it will fit, but maybe not with the 300 series. When you look at the 315P, it does have more of a niche 
that sort of like utility mount is going to be useful for a tractor beam as well as um, that better scanning array. It might be more suitable for very small scale hauling with its 12 SCU. Actually, that's quite, quite good for a ship of its size, that amount of cargo space. The 350R is focused for racing, but it would also make a solid interdictor or personal shuttle, but it's got racing ship tax inflating its price. The 325A does have a lot of missiles, but if I was going for a pure dogfighter, I'd probably go for the Arrow. I think it's amazing, though the 325A potentially has quite a bit more range because of its size and its facilities. It has a bed, a toilet, uh, and it, it has a load of missiles as well. Please remember that this will all be available in game at some point and Star Citizen is constantly changing and evolving based on the needs of the game and feedback from players so things might change. And if you want to change the systems, the weapons, the loadouts on your ship, you can do it through the ship customizer. The ship customizer on the website um, allows you to change the paint jobs and colors of your ship. Um, add some flare items in internally which will have use like that food maker and, and, and that sort of stuff and change the trim and the seating and the, the, the steering wheel and all that sort of jazz and some of those options are entirely free to do and you can change your paint job and some of them are like one or two dollars and all that sort of stuff but the cost for changing weapon and components loadouts are quite expensive sort of like ranging 30 30 dollars like two to thirty dollars based on the sort of like loadout you want all of those Weapons and gear and better ones are available in game now and you can use your in-game currency, your alpha UBC that you've um, accrued in game to purchase those things and when you place them on that ship during the patch, so they do your alpha UBC purchases and um, alpha UBC does get reset every major patch admittedly, but when you reclaim a ship that has been changed or edited, you keep all the customization on it now. So customize it in game. Why why spend real money on that sort of customization beyond the sort of like skins and cool aesthetics? If you want to do that, great. It's only going to cost you a couple of dollars or potentially nothing at all for the customizations you want. Anyway, that was a bit more of a ramble than anything else at the end. Uh, I'm interested to know your thoughts on 300 series. Do you like any of them? Do you prefer something else like the Avenger Titan or Arrow or even something entirely different? Do you already own one and love how amazing they look or do you hate the Origin brand? Whatever your opinions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for June. We have an Origin 890 Jump, the massive luxury ship that should also be flyable with Alpha 3.6 at the end of the month. That is a huge, huge sort of like capital luxury ship. It's been donated by Odyssey Interstellar, a friendly industrial expansionist organization in Star Citizen that focus on mining, trading, industry, exploration, research, and infrastructure. In short, commerce is their goal. They run regular weekly events in-game now. Please check them out if you are looking for an org to join. Links down below. There are a couple of services I shield for as well that you might find useful. If you're looking for a VPN, then check out NordVPN. I use it for security privacy and more it has massive advantages over free vpns and if you use the code board gamer you get up to 75 percent off your subscription boom also there is shadow cloud gaming this is an alternative to having your own or upgrading your gaming rig on pc it leverages the power of the internet and your own shadow server that emulates a high spec windows 10 pc so you can play up to 144 hertz 4k anywhere with an old pc laptop smartphone or even tablet Freedom to play anywhere. The internet is good enough anyway. And it works really well with Star Citizen and all the games that I play. And is constantly updated and even improved with new hardware. Again, use the code BOARDGAMER for discount. Links below to all of that jazz. Thank you to all that support the channel through Patreon, the YouTube join button, donations, subscribe star, as well as anyone that just generally subscribes, likes, comments, and shares my content. Dings that bell. Ding, ding. If you feel so inclined, you can find uh, links to all of that down below. A special thank you, though, to my VIP producers this month, Dalamars, Catastrus, Raz, Gear Khan, General Ventador, Robert Johnson, and Andy Green, who have given well beyond the norm in support for the channel. I know a load of other people have, but I can't name them all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.